Hello, I am Dr. Phil Hulbig from the Program for the Advancement of Learning at Curry College. Today we're going to be talking about defining metacognition. The fundamental definition of metacognition kind of came from John Flavel in 1979. Um, he was investigating the inability to identify inconsistencies um, or this idea of comprehension failure which was just first described by Marksman in 1979. This is kind of related to regulation, but I'll come back to that in a second. Because really, the point that I want to make here is that John Flavel was really interested in understanding and trying to figure out why people fail to understand things. And he came up with this conception of metacognition to try to explain that. So what is metacognition? Well, it's kind of a compound word. The first part is meta. That's the prefix that means to go beyond or grow out of. And then there is the root word, which is cognition, which is thinking. So when you put it all together, you get a simple you know, sort of definition that metacognition is thinking about thinking or thinking that goes beyond thinking or cognitions about cognitions, which is kind of the way that Flavel sort of explained it. Now, Flavel's model of metacognition had two key components. One was metacognitive knowledge and one was metacognitive regulation. Metacognitive knowledge has to do with all of those things that you know about learning, both from yourself and, you know, just learning more generally, like cultural knowledge. So this includes both habits and personal behaviors, but also neurobiological and physiological understanding. Um, you know, it could include what you know about uh, your learning disability, uh, if you're like ADHD, uh, it could be what you know about your mental skills, um, you know, strengths and weaknesses that you possess. It also interestingly includes things that you know about your own mindset or what your mindset are and what your beliefs about learning are. All of these can affect your metacognitive knowledge or knowledge about how you learn. The other aspect of metacognition is this idea of metacognitive regulation, which are the behaviors that you do um, to regulate yourself and make sure that you're doing correctly on a task. Um, and originally, Flavel had broken this down into three sort of areas, but they've been sort of uni unified in this, this one sort of idea of metacognitive regulation. But Flavel's original breakdown was at first you had this one stage of metacognitive experience which is really all of the things in the moment that you are aware of that are affecting experience trying to solve a problem so these are things related to your feelings your uh, you know relative data that is occurring in the experience at that moment the next level has a lot to do with your awareness of the goal and the task that you are trying to achieve. So these include all the things such as strategies and steps that are involved in the task. It's also your ability to kind of identify conditions within yourself and within the environment that might be impacting your progress. So like knowing, you know, let's say how to break up a task into smaller chunks so that you can get it done or uh, being aware that if a certain thing occurs while you are completing a task that uh, you should respond in this way rather than continuing with the steps let's say that are are laid out for you the last area was what he called action strategies and these are a little bit higher level strategies that really have to do with how much do you know about the task that you're trying to do are you aware of the other strategies that are out there and the other ways of doing things you know so uh, if we were thinking about studying for example uh, well you're studying you would start with actually your the metacognitive experience of what is going on while you sit down and start studying you know uh, what how do you feel about the situation how well do you feel like you know the information that you're going to be studying you know do you have the data that you need to be able to study um, you know do you have that study guide or the notes or or those kinds of things your metacognitive awareness of the tasks would be the steps involved in the actual process that you are going to take to study 
okay and also being aware of you know like have I been studying too long do I need to take a break or have I taken too many breaks and I need to actually really knuckle down on this and then the third area kind of to continue the comparison to studying would be action strategies which would be asking yourself how many different ways of studying this particular information do you know is the style of studying that you've chosen the best for the situation having action strategies sort of help you better evaluate your progress and how you are actually doing something so all of these get folded into this idea of metacognitive regulation and metacognitive regulation is kind of interesting because it segues and actually has kind of morphed into this idea of self-regulation but self-regulation comes from uh, Albert Bandura here um, pictured and he was really interested in um, you know how people behave how do people come to behave his his classic theory social learning theory is this idea of self-regulated learning like what are the conditions that allow a person to regulate their behavior and get things done and so uh, these two ideas of metacognitive regulation and self-regulation should really comes from sort of a behavioral approach of how do we modify our behaviors okay and, and it really is how do we modify our behaviors when we're talking about self-regulation and so uh, you know this leads to this sort of weird cognitive behavioral paradox which is where does our understanding in behavior come from does our behavior come from our ability to understand and see you know the inconsistencies in what we need to do or does understanding come from the things that we are doing the behaviors that we are practicing the um, the tasks that we are involved in and right now if you look at the the data it really looks like it's kind of both okay um, and so so when we're looking at self-regulation we're looking at, at you know both internal and external factors that may affect your ability to control your behavior and, and, and direct yourself towards the goals that you want to achieve and these could be both conscious or unconscious factors a big piece of self-regulatory study which has I believe been great is the realization that emotional regulation and motivation loom very large in this process. Flavel was aware of this um, connection when he was talking about metacognitive experiences because he kind of had the feelings and feelings of knowing sort of wrapped up into that experience. But what self-regulated learning theory has discovered is that emotional factors are are very very powerful when it comes to our ability to regulate and perform tasks um, and and one of the big ideas that Bendora brought to the table was this idea of self-efficacy which is the ability to utilize and incorporate your knowledge about regulation monitoring self-control planning all of that stuff that it's your ability to use yourself to achieve what you are trying to achieve and this is where a weird that weird cognitive behavioral paradox comes into play again because as a person's metacognitive knowledge about their self-efficacy develops so does their ability to control their behavior in their environment which improves their self-efficacy so the two processes really do work together as um, John Flavel kind of pointed out that they, as your regulation improves, your ability to understand how you were regulating yourself improves, and that understanding drives that process. And so this brings me to the research of Robert Keegan, because if you take this idea of using your knowledge to help regulate your behavior, and develop your self-efficacy then eventually you get to a point where you are able to self-author your life in other words you are able to organize your behavior the things that you need to do and elements in your environment so that you can achieve the results for your life that you want
And this idea comes from Robert Keegan's book, The Evolving Self. Robert Keegan felt that self-authorship was one of the higher levels of human development, that many, many people don't actually reach this level of self-development because they don't ever develop the metacognitive skills and self-regulatory behaviors that are necessary to achieve self-authorship. If you don't have the self-regulatory skills to get the job done that you want to get done or that you need to get done to achieve the goal that you you desire then you're not going to achieve that goal you're not going to be able to actually self-author yourself and many people allow themselves to sort of you know float in the um the tide of life and let life bring them wherever it's going to bring them but a person who has developed self-authorship has the ability to work against that and set goals for themselves and drive themselves towards personal goals. So I want to leave you with this point. Development, understanding, and comprehension can be explained and interacted with through this metacognitive process of knowledge and regulation. And this is really the big idea of metacognition. 